anyone around here speak basketball? <laughs> It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Oh, boy. Oh, I see. You're trying to psych me out now. I just faked Matt out. He was, he was ready to interrupt my introduction. Yeah. And uh, he spoke first. So I think That's like, true. I feel pretty uh, on the game right now. <laughs> On my game, um, this is Freddie Rivas. Uh, welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks basketball podcast. Uh, who the hell are you, sir? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Matt Duncan. I'm the uh, producer, the man on the keys, uh, and uh, you're your digital media director. <laughs> you damn right I am. <laughs> That's on my mind now. Oh, for sure. Uh, 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 social media light and all that. Oh um, yeah, big time. Big but time. Uh, thanks to everyone who listens to this podcast. Uh, yeah, follow us on 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 a various stuff. What what, what are all our our uh, follow options? Well, we've Matt? got we've got uh, Instagram, which is big with the younger kids. Okay, it's mm-hmm. Confederacy of Dunks, and then we've got uh, Dunks podcast on Twitter. Woo! You can go to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, listen to us there. So somebody is. Even giving us ratings on Stitcher, which is nice. Wow, thank I didn't know you. people listen on Stitcher. Hey, they do. There are some some Android lovers out there. Yeah, well, um, you know, give us uh, ratings, good ones, please. Yeah, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, some fun reviews. Just type for a bit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but a uh, sincere thank you to everyone who does listen to this podcast. Um, we're selling toques now, so yeah, hit, hit us up yeah. for that. Um, if you listen to this podcast, you probably maybe know me personally or, <laughs> or know someone who knows me. So reach out. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, let's bring on our, our favorite guest. Um, Ooh, Ooh yeah, that was a bold, uh, that just slid off wow, the tongue, yeah. but wow. I'm sorry to everyone else, yeah, I guess. We've had a lot of guests, Freddie. We've had a uh, lot of guests. I've never taken him up in his headphone offer. <laughs> yeah, um, we both love Jokic. <laughs> uh, good oh, wow. times ahead. Give it up for Ian Gordon. Oh, yeah. I love this. Yeah, you know what? I'm, it's growing on me, this song. Yeah, man. <laughs> you better like it. You're the favorite guest. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Oh, well, I got to plug the toque. I, uh, they look very comfortable. Feels good on the head. And I'm a bald man. So if there's any bald bald people out there, yeah, it, you need to keep your head warm <laughs> at this time of year. You're damn right. And I do recommend a Confederacy of Dunks toque. Uh, is it oh, feeling wow. itchy at all, or are you? Not, there's not even a whisper of an itch anywhere on my, and that's not just the <laughs> side of my head and forehead. Like you, hair people have to deal with. Yeah. That's yeah. my top of my head, my skull. <laughs> wow, not no a itch. whisper of a witch. Yeah, yeah. Um, whisper of an itch. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes is there a, a witch bit, on his head. I don't know, but that would you know that. that All toques come with a small witch. That that also flowed pretty well. Yeah, whisper of a um, witch. Let's let's hit up uh, the, the best goddamn segment on this show. Um, hey. Matt, tell me something I don't know about <sighs> Benoit Benjamin. Benoit Benjamin. Whose name I don't think I've ever read or heard before. So He's another one of them early raps. Now he was playing in the league. I think he played since 85, and his heyday was with the Clippers. Uh, mm. But he signed as a free agent in the Raptors' second season. He played four games. Started three, started wow. three, and then they waved him a month later. Uh, he was uh, the Clippers' all-time blocks leader for a long time until who overtook him? DeAndre. DeAndre Jordan. Nice. Yeah, so it was till recently. He was like the leading block guy. I was going to say Chris uh, Kamen. You know, I wanted to start with this one because, you know, you got to get some of these guys out of the way. You sure do. Not yeah. a lot of good stuff about this guy post-NBA. Oh, are, uh, are, are we are we going into a sad place right well, now? Well, just he's had a lot of trouble with the law. Okay. You know, there's been drug possession. He's, uh, you know, battery, failure to pay child support. Uh, one of the favorite, my most favorite things I found on him, he was described in a sports article as, uh, during his playing days, having the enthusiasm to play as being compared to a husband holding his wife's purse at the mall for three hours. Wow. So that is remember. a roundabout slight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a really roundabout so slight. It just looks pretty bored out there, he I guess. Upset. He was upset that he was in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. Well, huh. he, I guess he took it for granted. Okay. But, well, the, uh, the Clippers were really bad for sure. Yeah. They were the laughing stock of the league. So... For him to be the, like, the leader of in blocks there, it's kind of funny. Mid eighties till ninety one or so, I think he was there. Oh boy, yeah, bad years for the mid eighties to ninety one. He probably did. I mean, listen, I don't know the guy, but he probably partied a lot. 
Yeah. 80s in LA, you, you're, oh, you're, God, the yeah. team is shit. You're getting paid. Your boss is good. Donald Sterling. Dude, your boss is Donald Sterling, wow. uh, bigot. <laughs> yeah. You don't care about him. You pro- he probably partied a lot. Yeah. Oh. Good for Benoit. And his name's Benoit. <laughs> Benoit. Yeah, so Sounds another... like he should be in the UFC. I know. For me, you know, Chris Benoit, that's my Benoit. There's yeah. no, there's oh, no right. Benoit. That's what I'm thinking about. Just, um, just so the more I do this, so I did a, a roll count too. I've done about seventy two now, seventy two players. Wow, there's a lot of players that have only played two, <laughs> two to four games. Hey, you, yeah, you're right. We, we, we got to rack them up, <laughs> you know. Um, so all the folks here? who uh, yeah. tuned into this pod to maybe hear some rappers talk <laughs> and heard about Benoit Benjamin, <laughs> a sincere apology. Um, is there any other goods there, Matt? That's it for Benoit. Okay, probably great. a lot of people chomping at the bit to get that. Finally, there's got to be a few people going. Finally, they talk about. Benoit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone just like touched down, spiked their phone on the ground, and yeah. they're like, they're good to go. Also, yeah. wherever Chris Kamen is right now, he's wiping sweat off of his forehead. Guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> unless he's got both hands on his AK yeah. and he's yeah. shooting fish. Exactly. He's either By the way, shooting a fish or wiping sweat off his brow. If you've never seen the video of Chris Kamen, just like. Just blasting into the ocean yeah. off of a small boat with an AK. What? It's real, and you got to check it out. Um, <laughs> did, he, did he eat the fish he shot? I don't think he had any <laughs> retrieval method. Uh, but let's let's talk some raps. Matt, mm-hmm. would you give me the raptor sting? Ocean Bank Arena. Let's not forget our home, guys. Has the Scotiabank Arena grown on you? No, not one no, bit. You're still an ACC guy. Definitely. I actually cool, saw cool, a sign cool. that that uh, <laughs> I saw a sign that um, said uh, Scotiabank, home of the Raptors and the Maple Leafs. And although that's true, yeah, I it just doesn't sit well with me. Oh, I thought you were going to say they forgot about the Toronto Rock. Uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Don't get me started on the Toronto Rock. <laughs> oh, Forget about them. You have a real yeah. enemy in me. Um, cool. Let's uh, let's let's dive in. Uh, so obviously the uh, Pacer game is going to be going on uh, as we speak. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're not going to be talking too much about that. But uh, hopefully we um, kicked their damn ass, and hopefully it's a good game. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I feel like it's been a lot of good feels since that Boston loss. Um, yes. A lot of breakouts from from uh, from guys. Uh, Miles um, McCaw showed up. He's doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, he's passing the ball to the hot shooter. He was playing excellent defense in that uh, Sacramento game. Um, Lowry seems like he's maybe starting to hit some shots, find a bit of a groove. Fred looks good. DeLon looks good. Yep. Norm is still consistently good. Siakam is... Is it officially? He's officially in All Star or All Star snub conversation. It's crazy in a real way. Yeah. Um. I hope I didn't take all that good juju. No, but, no, uh, no. Yeah. Like, what's a like? How, how are you feeling right now? I feel great. I think that it's impressive that they can do this when they have key guys out. Whether you know Lowry was out for a bit, he's back now. Jonas has been out. OG's been out for a little bit. When you have you have guys who are out, and then you have players who've played before just step up and immediately start playing well. That's a sign of a good team chemistry. Yeah. A team that's well coached, a team that likes each other. It's a it's a healthy it seems just like a healthy locker room. The guys know they have a legitimate shot of getting to the finals. They just have to play together and work hard and I mean it shows. And McCaw, great pickup. You know what I mean? He looks great. Yeah. I, I he's think great, he's like he's a good player. First, you know, couple shifts was like, wait, why? Why did we get this guy? Mm-hmm. Um, but he plays stout defense. He does, and uh, he made a lot of winning plays. And I also feel like, you know, it's hard to, um, it's hard to not want another guy that's six foot seven, yeah. and athletic. Well, he and, he, uh, he was on Golden State, right? And they, yeah, uh, was it last year they and won he's got cha- two championships. Yeah, so I mean. You're coming from a, a professional system like that into another one. Mm-hmm. You already know how to act. You already know what's required to win. And you're coming from a pretty, like, good coach, too, in, in Kerr. It's kind of like, you know, there's some liberty there, but we're here to win. Right? Yeah. It's so a, it's, it's kind it's... of a similar-ish system that he's going into. So he fits well. And moving the ball, passing. Mm-hmm. So McCaw, I didn't even – it's just a great pickup, you know? Yeah. I, for, I... for not a lot. 
my topic for McCall last, uh, last week was, do you, yeah, fair enough, um, yeah. was, uh, do you care about McCaw? And the answer was generally no. Um, and I feel like uh, me, Elisa, and Katie, I wouldn't say, oh, McCaw, an apology, but uh, I'll say that I'm caring a little bit. I feel like there's a, a nice, healthy <laughs> kind of competition, in, especially mm-hmm. in the wing spots mm-hmm. of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, adding McCaw to the rotation, that's just another guy that's, going to be fighting for those eight minutes in the playoffs. Like, you know, it's, it's loaded. Like I think the, the story of depth um, seems to be coming back for me. Like the way we yep. just, you know, we're keeping Sacramento at bay and they kind of kept getting close. Bagley looked pretty good by the way. I thought Yeah, he did. And um, yeah, just, uh, just the way we kind of pulled away with CJ and, mm-hmm. and even a guy like Greg Monroe, he just looks pretty bad on offense, but he's, He's tough, and and he was doing some stuff on D, I thought. Again, you have players who know their role. Like, um, you got the Moose out there. Moose knows he's not going to be getting the sh- the plays called for him and backing guys down. Mm-hmm. But he does know that he can contribute. He can rebound. He can pass the ball. He can make sure he blocks out one, if not two dudes. He can get the odd and one. And again, that speaks to just a team that is really kind of up for it and they know who they are right this Raptors team and the funny thing is you talk about rotation rotation last year was big too we always talked about how we have this deep team our bench we've got this we've got team A and then team B comes out and they're deadly right but Casey in fair if you look back on it hindsight wise Mm -hmm. there's a bit too much rigidity almost oh yeah and and we talked about my biggest criticism right of Casey and his rigidity was one of his big shortcomings and Another thing that makes me feel good is that Nurse is not of that ilk. We didn't know. The jury was kind of out a little bit. I remember when we were first talking about it. Right. And we had, you know, PMA, baby. Positive mental attitude. Keep, keep <laughs> Damn your, right you know, we do. Keep your eyes on the prize. God damn it, we're trying. If we, <laughs> the Ra- Toronto fans have been beat around pretty badly. So We really when, are an insecure yeah. bunch. Yeah, when shit happens like that, you're like, oh, God, I don't know. But it, I'm really relieved to see that Nurse... Is a he looks like a player's coach. It, there was a few times last night in the or in the Sacramento game when you know we had a bit of we had an eight point nine point ten mm-hmm. point cushion. Then they came back, cut it to four. He called a timeout and and they cut just to him and he was it's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't like you pieces of sh-, you know. He was it's going to be fine. We got this. And I think that the, that he knows how to get the most out of those guys. And he's really good at, at getting, playing the hot player and also playing his, his rotations are good there. He mixes shit up. He, he, I, I love, I really like what he's doing. Bottom line. Yeah. So, he's uh yeah, I've, I've said it a bunch of times before, but I really feel like he has a mandate um, to be, uh, to experiment with the roster. Yeah. And he yeah. is, and it's paying off yeah. in the biggest way. And we should experiment with that roster. We've got so much versatility. We've got, you know, we've got so much length on the wing. We've got tons of shooters. We've got, actually, if you look at it, pretty big bodies when need be. We've got, we can bring out JV, who's big and tough. We can bring out the Moose, who's big and tough. We can bring out Surge, who can block, and who's big and tough. Like, and we're, we're, we have so much versatility that it 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 would be stupid not to play with lineups because then you can just watch film and make notes and see what works against who and why and when, right? Why wouldn't you? By the way, just because I'm just because we're talking about how how deep this roster is and how many people are actually getting playing time. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at the roster right now, everyone has played and right. had their moment. Um, you know, tip my hat to Lorenzo Brown. He's, <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, he's uh, you know he's uh, he's in a different place right now. Yeah, um, but he might come back. Who knows? But uh, um, look, there's 17 guys, yeah. and uh, yeah, I guess Jordan Lloyd, you know, has been only garbage minutes. This, and you know, Malachi Richardson hasn't really done anything. But obviously, CJ struggled as well. But you know, the, these three games have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy though who's standing out to me, and we haven't talked about as, as far as just good feels, is Boucher. I know. So check this out. He's averaging. Um, four oh nine, uh, percentage from three. Really? Yes. Hmm. So Boucher is definitely, and he's also just lighting up the D league. He's letting it fly. Yeah, he's letting it fly. Well, good. Uh, this is the thing. It's just, it's nice to see this because you have it. Uh, you have a team that is going to take some chances, and they're going to use the regular season in a way that they should. They're they know they're good. They know they can beat 
teams, you know, they say a lot of these guys will say any team in the NBA can beat you, and that's true. But these guys are pretty confident, and they have everybody out there, mm-hmm. even if they don't, they can beat bad teams. And not only that, but another thing that they do is they play big for big teams most of the time, right? It's and in fairness, Casey's team was good at that too. But these reps, they're they're not sluggish and lazy against teams they can beat. And then when teams come into town or yeah. team we go on the road against a good team, we play hard, and that's. A good I think sign so. Too. Like we, you know, we've had a, we've we've had some everyone has uh, like marquee yeah. losses, but and I, I can't well, every think team of does. I can't think of any game really where we played a really good team and kind of just got like smacked. Um, you know, I mean, like with Kawhi playing yeah, here like, and there, it happens. Like, the the you know. Pelicans game that I went to kind of kind of jumps out. Yeah, but you know, Denver games were tight. Uh, the, yes, our losses were. to Boston were tight. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Milwaukee has beat us once without Kawhi. Wait, yeah. twice, I'm sorry, they beat us twice. twice. Did they? Wait, okay, was that a game where we got a smacking? It might have been. They like a I little think bit. We got beat. Yes, yeah, but I, that is a bit of a game. Every yeah. team has those, you know. Uh, and I, I'm not going to get up too too worried about stuff like that because there's 82 games in the damn season. <laughs> but I think that the way that they're the way that they're going about themselves right now is giving me good feelings I for like the playoffs. It. Bringing it back. Yeah, um, feeling good. So how about this? Nurse is kind of throwing a caution to the wind, right, with the, all these different experiment yeah. type lineups, um, which goes into the next <clears throat> topic pretty well. Um, they're, nurse is definitely not throwing caution to the wind with Kawhi. Neither sure. is the franchise, yeah. neither is Kawhi, neither is Kawhi's people. Mm-hmm. Um I believe there was a an athletic article by Eric Kareen, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think, obviously, you know, with Eric Kareen, I'm sure it's a very nuanced article. Um, but I feel like that kind of ignited the insecure fan base that is mm-hmm. the Raptors. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's I feel like it's a real non-story about Kawhi resting or maybe being a bit injured. Um, and I feel like this is a guy who really, really knows his body. And came off a super, like one of the most tumultuous seasons we've ever seen from a superstar. Um, and it was all surrounding his health and yeah. his misdiagnosis and the fact that the franchise wanted him to play and he didn't want to play. Yep. Am I mistaken in saying that the Raptors are doing the obvious thing they're supposed to do? With yeah. Kawhi, I, I, I mean, this is what I would do. Think about how much this means to you. If you can, if everything you look at Kawhi is about this year and beyond, if it's all long game, then you have to play this this card. What are you going to do? Are you going to force the guy to play? He, it, like you said, but I'd say even short game. Yeah, well, exactly. Like short we want him long. in the playoffs, short, right? Short yeah. and long. Yeah, he knows his body. Uh, you know, if he want, if he's not going to play, then then so be it. The Indian it. In in many ways, you can say, well, Kawhi is not playing, and you can drum up that side of it. But you can also say, he's not playing, but he's right there. The guys know that. And against Indy, they're going to they're gonna play hard. Watch. Tonight, there, there will be no back down in that team. There will be no, you know, cowardice, no chicken shit attitude. Those guys are going to play hard at the field house because they want to beat them without Kawhi. They want to prove a point. They want to say... We can beat this team without our best player. Come at us at home when we have our best player because we're going to have a better record than you, right? So I think a lot of that, it's you You can look at the other side of it too as a an opportunity for the other players to make a big statement, right? And take it as a personal challenge. In terms of Kawhi, let him sit out if that's what he wants to do. You know, everything is, a, you're dealing with an interesting personality and not the average NBA personality, especially when you look at the superstar. Most superstars are somewhat gregarious or mm-hmm. at least a bit more affable than he is. He seems really nice and kind. Yeah, but he's he not, seems like a really nice yeah, guy, but, exactly, not, but outwardly, you know, doesn't like the spotlight. We play, place this pressure on, on guys like that, that they, when you see somebody like LeBron and players of his ilk, everybody should automatically be like LeBron and, and Wade and be able to be f- good in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. You think that's it's, it's this assumption. that, And if that's not how he is, that's fine. Let's play up to that. Let him be as comfortable as humanly possible as a professional member of the Raptors franchise. So when it comes to time for him to decide, it's actually a hard decision, right? And we also have an amazing medical staff, too. This They always talk about every time, baby. every time there's Woo! a national broadcast – 
like Hubie or whatever will always mention it. Our Kawhi, and they'll talk about Hubie Alex. loves us, by the way. Yes. Uh, every does. time Hubie is doing a Raptors game, I'm like, oh shit, we're going to get a bunch of nuanced compliments. I think, I, love might, it. I think he's got a soft spot for Canada. He probably, probably came to Toronto and had a big, big good time, but he probably yeah. partied oh, you I'm know, sure. in the 70s or something. Hubie style. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you like brought the house down. Oh, and yeah. by house, I mean Casaloma. That's Hubie, baby. Because that's where he would party for oh, sure. Yeah. Uncle Hubie doesn't mess around. <laughs> no, he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely like um, <laughs> the path underground and or Casaloma. Three I piece think. brown suit, big <laughs> wide tie. Eh? Three piece brown Rose suit. Rose colored yeah, oh, glasses. Yeah. Hubie's all stone. Oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful. If the Raptors go up three nothing in the first round, mm-hmm. do you rest Kawhi for game four? Um, no, <laughs> just because it's the playoffs, but that would be That's funny. weird and cool. That would be cool. Like if, if, if we had that triumphant yeah. of a first round, <laughs> Raptors fans would get close to like setting up a parade. I think. Yeah. Um, but no, actually that kind of, you know, again, leads into, uh, where I want to go. Um, I think the comparisons between this year and last year are just you know, going to exist at every single turn of the yeah. season and the playoffs. Um, just looking at the power rankings from last week. So I guess it's a, it's a day, it's a game old, but um, Raptors are pace uh, in pace. They're 17 uh, offense. They're six uh, defensive rating. They're ninth and net rating. They're six. Mm-hmm. So by this time last year, all of those were higher. I think particularly the offense, um, you know, Houston had that runaway offensive mm-hmm. season, but the Raptors, uh, if I'm not mistaken, were second or third that they finished last year. Mm-hmm. So I can't, I can't really put my finger on if I, or I, I can't really decide if it's like the new pace of the NBA and this is a new system and there's all this experiment, experimenting going on, or if, um, you know, in some meaningful ways, we're a little bit worse this year. And and by that I mean like oh like uh over the over the, the kind of like long regular season like it's like we've de-emphasized mm-hmm. the regular season, and yeah. I, I'm wondering if that's what we're seeing. Maybe May- might be a little bit of that. I think a lot of it. We last year was like apex Casey, right? Mm-hmm. We had our kind of our best year. Yeah, and, it was so uh, regimented too. Yeah, and and he'd been in town for a number of years, so guys knew what to expect from him, knew his system. There was a lot of people who. <clears throat> really knew their roles and kind of mm-hmm. knew what to play. And because of that, I think our our efficiencies as a basketball team were way up. We're very efficient, right? We're a well-oiled machine. Yeah. With a little bit more of this loosey-goosey kind of figuring out who's who, that's going to attribute to, you know, pinning us back a bit in terms of our, our advanced stats. Mm-hmm. I think that we can improve on all that stuff. Pace, definitely. It's. Uh, I'm know. wondering if it's just that our bench, yeah. like Milwaukee, is not crushing people sure. because our bench has been so fluid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Siakam's not on the bench. Pirtle's not on the bench. Yeah. Um, Jonas had a pretty horrific injury. He's yeah. missed a lot of time. How long has he been um, gone? 15 games now? Uh, something like that. Maybe I think more? he's at he's somewhere around, they said four to six weeks, and I think he's, I think he's getting close to six weeks. I'm not, I, I couldn't. I'm not exactly sure, but but also I feel like uh, it might take him a bit of time when he starts to play. Oh, definitely. Just because, yeah, he had like a, you know, it broke his thumb yeah. and it was like a major surgery or, mm-hmm. or it was a pretty quick surgery anyow. Yeah, but I think, yeah, the, having him back and all well, that will help too. He's a, he's a big call. He's been out for a while. Mm-hmm. But again, I think our stats, it's weird. It's an anomaly. The stats are down, but the team, I like the team better. Me that's too. Stats that's how, are, yeah, that's how I feel. You know, stats are always... It's a nice way to get a grip on kind of what's happening and get get your bearings. But unless you actually watch the games and kind of get a feel for how guys are in the timeouts and everything else, you realize that this team seems to be happier than they were before. Uh, Shout out to I test Elisa. Right? I'm <laughs> telling you. And and guy, the emergence of Siakam, like... Damn! Obviously, they knew something we didn't. I guess because they Siakam did, is a monster. They I did mean, not give him up for like the, they could. It could have easily been Demar and Siakam instead of De, Demar and Jakob. Mm-hmm. That you like, know what I mean. The fact that there was no Siakam or OG in the trade w- was easily telling, what I found the most it? shocking. Very well, it's telling. It 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 tells you that they know they've got something with those two guys, uh, and I think the rest of the team knows that too. Like even if you, I think it's going to be a tough 
choice for Kawhi to, to to leave. Honestly, people think he's just gone, 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 and this Clippers talk and everything and Lakers and I don't know. I I, I think that there's a little. It's a big market. You can win here. But it's also not – America is America, and it's got those pressures and everything else. And this is a little bit – it might just be weird enough for It might him. be the perfect you know I mean? outpost yeah. for an outlier yeah. guy yeah, like Kawhi, exactly. right? Yeah, a bit of a lone wolf kind of – people up in Canada, you can walk down the street, and we're, we're probably not as crazy somehow. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. the, back to the stats. I think the stats has a lot to do with that too. And again, you're, you're getting in – a brand new superstar who's the crux of your team, your anchor, him and Lowry, I guess, but him. And he's going to, he, he was obviously starting slow too. He wasn't fully there. We say he started at 75% or whatever. Now he's getting close. But I think that also having him kind of figuring out what the hell to do, that's going to affect our pace. And that's, there's going to be way more plays that if he's been here for two, three years, you're, we're going to shoot the ball up the court because this guy's outlet on the left side, boom, boom, basket. Yeah. But he doesn't, first 15, 20 games of the season, he's still kind of figuring out what the heck's going on. So a guy who plays a bit methodical is going to play even more so when he's figuring stuff out. Right? I think so. And I'm excited I'm excited for him to hopefully get a good 20, 30 games in with a guy like JV before the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, man. he's yeah. Just for pick and roll's sake. And, yeah. and clearly he has uh, chemistry with uh, Siakam. I think everyone does. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like Siakam's so all over the court that uh, it's an easy decision to just look up. Love Pascal. Like, Where he, is this guy? He really is an energizer, buddy. But he just out there too. He's got a great attitude. He's not. Oh, he's awesome. He doesn't. He's not cocky. He's not. He's just. He's confident as hell and very good. <laughs> and I'm kind of just like, well, okay, yeah, great. That's, that's nice. Um, good drafting. Yeah, all, all things. You. All things well in Raptor Land, really. Mm, um, feeling good. Let's uh, let's move on to some NBA. But first, um, Matt, why don't you tell me some I don't know about the newest Raptor, Patrick McCaw? Oh, oh Patrick McCaw. I love how you act uh, surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see what I, I just have like this, this trunk full of facts that I like to pull out. Uh, yes, he is a newly acquired Raptor. Now, I didn't really know much mm-hmm. about old Pat other than he was on the Warriors for a bit. Uh, but do you know about that whole dispute that happened with the Warriors? And how he, so it was a contract dispute. That's why he wasn't playing this year. Right. Mm. And then they, uh, the Cleveland, Cleveland, was sem- no. Cleveland sent him an offer sheet and he right. signed it. That picture. But then three games after that, they waived him. So the Warriors got the league to investigate to see if, if Cleveland just uh, signed him so that he could wiggle out of restricted free agency. Mm. Become a free agent, so like, oh, if Cleveland was just like, we're gonna mess with G State, yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, the NBA investigated it and they found no wrongdoing. But if they did, then Cleveland would lose a first round pick. Wow, wow. The which sta- would be the, real rough. The stakes are high, <laughs> Comic Sans Gilbert. So I didn't, yeah, wow. and just I didn't realize like this guy was really loved on that team by all the big stars. Yeah, man. Like Steph Curry said that he's got skills that you can't teach. So we kind of stole him. Yeah. Like yeah. this guy's oh, my, I'm loving this a, a lot. Huge buddy, it's a Maasai, buddy. It's Maasai. Yeah. yeah. It's Bless Maasai. Master, That's amazing. Master Maasai. Um, yeah. Knows. Like He's... they they were all really, like it just added to their dysfunction at the start of the year. You know, the Draymond and the Durant stuff. And then this, they're just like, why? This kid is our rookie of the future. I think he was. Right. At least how do we There's a picture of him uh, having just signed with the Cavs. Yeah. And he looks so dejected. <laughs> He yeah. looks he looks so sad. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you would be right. I mean, you went from living in San Francisco, the best team ever assembled, to being on this like horrible. I guess maybe maybe they give you twenty percent off at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they do. And you know, football Hall of Fame is not too far either. Yeah, you know? yeah that's all right. You can Ohio is pretty close. Yeah, yeah, I hear it's great. Um, um, it I actually think, is awesome. They're the yeah. the person who kicked the longest uh, field goal. By the way, has no toes. Cheers. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah, it was awesome. They, they, I, I checked out his boots. There's no toes for the boots. Ray Finkel has no like toes? A, that's almost like a... <laughs> Ray Finkel. No, I mean, it's like a squared off foot. I'm like, buddy, you got like a hammer of yeah, a foot. That's that's, wow. that's cheating, man. That does seem like it's cheating. And also, it might be a it might be a punt <laughs> and not a field goal. It doesn't matter. Someone with no toes kicked the ball super far. That's cool. Uh, cool. Um, the other, just the other thing, and another reason he may have left the Warriors, this is pretty upsetting, but he was uh, a victim of rookie hazing. Oh. With the G-State Warriors, and he was forced to do pre-flight food and beverage runs Ouch. for the team. No popcorn in the car? No. 
None pre-flight of that. for yeah. So, so they would be they're on about the plane to get on a flight, and, and it's like, go get me some junior mints. Oh man, oh man. You know, did he ever miss a flight because of that? <laughs> <laughs> <Imagine>. <laughs> Just him at the window as they're taking off holding all this stupid candy. Kerr is laughing, oh, too. Yeah. Well, we won't do that to you, Patrick. Play well for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Patrick. No Patrick, tr- give me a call, man. We'll go for roti, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. No tricks around here. And if Hubie yeah. comes no, by, he'll throw you a brown suit oh, party. Hubie, yeah. Hubie's got it on lock. <laughs> what, what else you got from a comedy that's, thing? That's pretty much it. He's a young kid, and uh, he hasn't done anything too silly yet. We're very happy just, to have him on the Raptors yeah. side. When yeah, I, me too. He, he, he's a great... Every time... I remember him because you'd watch Golden State and they superstars would come off and you'd be like, okay, thank God we have a fucking chance here. Livingston is on and McCaw. Mm. Let's please God do something. Get it to close, you know, four points, whatever. Yeah. And then McCaw would come on and with Livingston and they'd play great. And you'd yeah. be like, well, nobody has a chance in hell. Like, you know he, what I mean? He's already had a couple of plays where he passed up a shot and like hit. Like when Danny Green was on a roll, I feel like player. McCaw may, might have had two of those assists. So. Like, um, Again, for yeah. Joel, Golden State, t- if you have skill, they will find it, they will nurture it, and they'll teach you well. So if you can get a player who's won championships from there, who also is disgruntled and wouldn't mind sticking it to them, great. Hell yeah. Yeah. And he probably knows some of their plays. You, oh, I mean, that, that's... Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's also true. Yeah, and you for know... The finals. We're, we're, you know what I mean? He probably can give them some insight. For sure, he's especially like, if he was Clay's hit. a good shooter. Yeah. What you want to do is <laughs> stuff like that before the game. <laughs> before the game, hit Clay in the knee with a lead pipe. Yeah, yeah. Tanya Harding, if you can, Esquire. Ideally, if you can, I like that. Or like, basically, <laughs> put a banana somewhere in Steph Curry's Ooh, big yeah, warm up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like he goes to do like he's doing all his warm up shots, and like you're just the a very feel, strategic eh? banana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, give me no, old, no, give me whole Mario banana. Or, like, oh, like a whole banana, a mushy one. You know, not just the peel. Yeah, yeah. We want to make sure he really goes down. Um, okay, good, <laughs> cool. Yeah, we go. We we, we, we got, some, got a plan to beat the Warriors. All we just yeah. have to do is injure their players somehow. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, we won't. Do that. We're actually going to talk Warriors in a sec, but uh, Matt, mm-hmm. won't you give me that NBA? Sting. National, National Basketball, Basketball Association. Association. <laughs> that felt nice. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Came around to it. Mm. Did uh, Demarcus Cousins coming back ruin the uh, NBA season for you? Um, I don't know if he's. He hasn't ruined the entire season because I do love basketball so much, and there are other teams that I can watch. Things that I love, uh, you know, watching Luca and watching Giannis and watching our raps play. Yep. He kind of, in a bit, in a in a way, he does the the, the, the idea of parody. How about that? He ruins that a bit because if he listen, he's so good. Like he he cannot be stopped. You look at him down there, and he's it's the whole man amongst boys kind of thing. But it's true. He's just. His shoulders are as wide as a yacht. Like he's just, <laughs> yeah, he's just a huge son of a gun, and he wants to win. The guy's never played in the fucking playoffs. Can you believe he's that? He's supposed to come back he's slower never, than this. He's ne- well, pff, I it, feel so red faced because I was one of those people that no. uh, I was joking with uh, Matt McCready, who's uh, who's who's been on the um, pod before, and he uh, he was uh, he was kind of saying like the argument with Golden State is always like, I know they're really good, but what if they weren't? <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, I realized like I've been making that argument with Cousins, You're being like, like no. oh, they, you know, they're going to have a lower defensive uh, ceiling with him on the floor, and, uh, you know, the Basically, pace is yeah. going to be affected. But just watching the couple games, I'm like, he's too good to not integrate uh, himself in a meaningful way. What they're going to get That's rough is everybody. a guy who can score 55 points, uh, get 20 plus rebounds, and 10 plus assists in the same fucking game. But he so. tore his Achilles. Yeah, but he doesn't have to do anything on that team. You know what I mean? But when, I, for me, he looks healthy. That's what's throwing me the most, is that he looks yeah. like he's pr- like not mid-season form, but he looks really good. If you're a big guy and, and, and it's just you and Anthony Davis, and then Davis is out, and you're working your butt off, and you're probably not listening to your body the way you should because you do want to win and you're a big, angry dude, <laughs> you're yeah. gonna if you're susceptible to that type of injury, it's going to come, you know? Uh, but on Golden State, he... he <laughs> they're Golden State. He can just he can be 70, 80 percent Demarcus for eighteen of those minutes a game, and then when they need him to play at a hundred percent for four minutes when it counts, 
he will do so, and you cannot stop him at all. Yeah, nothing yeah. you can do. You get he gets the ball down low. He's an excellent passer. He can box anybody out and get a board. If th- if you think about a potential match in the finals versus hopefully the Raps or anybody else, mm-hmm. crunch time, you know, down by whatever, up by whatever, with three minutes left, that's Demarcus time, and he comes on. <laughs> With so are him. you are you not hearing any share the ball arguments <laughs> like that kind of stuff like will will Durant get pissed? No, He's I know they're gonna just going to be so good that it's has, barely going to matter. Is Durant going to get Durant doesn't get pissed when Clay Thompson uh, takes twenty shots and hits fifteen of them and doesn't dribble? Yeah, that's those are twenty shots that Durant could take. Those are also mm-hmm. twenty shots that Steph could take. Durant, they all get theirs. They're right now. These guys are laughing. They're all they're in this palace. Laughing and drinking wine, and, yeah, I and, hate and it. Being being fanned with big luxurious feathers, like there's not they're they're halfway serious about playing right now. For God's sakes, they know they're going to win. You know what frustrates me is that you know I've been building this story in my head, like you know what if the if the West just hits them by surprise and they have a, a tough series against I mean maybe. Portland and then Denver and then the conference finals against Houston and they're weakened along the way, oh. but uh, they look like. You know, they had been kind of like saving when they're going to gear it up. And I, I feel like it's starting to gear up well, right uh, now. Yeah. And they're just going to steamroll all that stuff, the rest of the year. All that stuff can happen. They can have tough matchups. It's when they're when you're this good. And, a guy can hope, right? Yeah. Well, when you're this good and you have a team that is that is deeper and better than most teams, you need... For other teams to have a shot, unfortunately, you need other teams to play super duper hard, and you need some misfortune somewhere down the line. Somehow, a bounce doesn't go your way, somebody gets sick, somebody turns their ankle and is out for a crucial game. Not even a big injury. Mm-hmm. That you know, player X isn't playing game five in the finals. Happened with Draymond, right? Little things like that, and in previous years, a lot of that stuff has gone their way whether it's matchups or Kawhi beating the absolute crap out of them and they're up by they're down by 20 and then Zaza you right so things that have they're already so good and then things go their way right so <laughs> we need a few we need a few like going other teams ways to to have a shot i don't think DeMarcus is going to hurt them he's he as much as he's got a crazy attitude worst case scenario he throws the ball into the stands and gets kicked out of the game, and then they're still the Golden State Warriors. I know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I find it frustrating that they drafted so many of these guys. Yeah, but that's how you. That's how you, ju- that's how you win uh, long term. You know who finds it more frustrating? Sacramento. Yeah. Because yeah. they've had all the same picks. What about Charlotte? Sh- exactly. All these teams that are who actually, are you know what? This is this who is kind are of these perfect. GMs are they? Are these GMs just? Are they drinking like? Just barrels full of scotch and they're hammered. Like no, I, I'm actually stu- like idiots. Like I'm actually convinced. Cody like Zeller, I, Cody Zeller. I've heard this argument a bunch of times now, and I forget who and I heard it from first or well, which podcast. But um, uh, it might have been the Dunkton podcast. But uh, it's it's almost more so about owners. Oh, yeah. Because if you look where the meddling owners are, yeah. their franchises no, like, are horrible. Well, right? they hire the GMs. That's right, and they fire them when they like make yeah. a good decision. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean? Like, so because I, I, I think GMs are generally like super qualified, super mm-hmm. intelligent mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. but um, they're limited. Not right? not saying they don't you know make like giant mistakes, but but they don't ultimately have the keys to the car. You're yeah. right because they if they want to go out and get player X, it's going to run through the owner in especially if you're a bit of a crackpot owner. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like the move, you're going to say no. So yeah. it, the GM, they always get the sword, uh, but it's often, you're right, it's not necessarily their fault all the time. But uh, I'm not, I don't feel sorry for them. God, no. I mean, they, they've they some been horrible picks, man. Sacramento, yeah. like, geez, how can you be bad for this long? How many lottery picks do you need? Ricky Rubio, Johnny Flynn. They have not. They have not. Remember, yeah. remember Minnesota? Oh, yeah. Back to, yeah. Back sure. to back, right before Curry. Let's go ahead. That's and, a tough one. Let's go ahead and get two guards for some reason. <laughs> and But make sure none of them's Curry. Cheers. Yeah, don't get Curry. That's stupid. <laughs> he scored like 25 points a game on Davidson. He's an amazing shooter. Don't don't get him. This, this is kind of perfect, though. We went from talking about Golden State, the amazingness mm. of Golden State. And uh, I think it's... I'm not a super pro-tanking guy in general. Um 
I feel like there's a lot of ways to retool while and not suck and it be good long term, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think sometimes teams need to sell their assets for future better assets. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in a full out Atlanta Hawks right now, Cleveland oh, like bottoming out way. Um, but yeah, uh, I was wondering if if there's any teams that you thought are kind of middling, might make the playoffs in the East or something, mm -hmm. or a bit too good in the West. A, a team that is should be thinking about the future yeah. and is not. Well, that's a good question, actually. And I, I, I was thinking about that. I, I like, um, I think the Clippers fit the bill. Well, really? The the, yeah. The, well, the Clippers, listen, they, they're, they're not. But they're going for a big free agent. Well, this is the thing is you can, you can do both. Like you might as well tank because you're not going to, you're not going to do well. Get, hmm. if you have space for a big free agent and you can somehow get into the top three of the draft, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why not? You're in LA too, right? Think about if you can get I wonder if RJ. they were half planning that because but they had such a good start. Listen, if you can get Reddish or they, RJ they or Lord, you know, Zion, if you can get if you can tank and get one of those three guys and then and then say, "Oh, by the way, we have Lord space Zion's for, wonderful by the oh, way." Oh god. I love uh, he's great. And just and, as a name, yeah, Lord, Lord Zion. Zion. Is well, he up. is Lord Zion. Yeah. He's going to be. Well, but, yeah, the Clippers are back to being in 8th. Well, this is the thing. Why bother? Might as well tank. Get yourself a get yourself a lotto pick. Have a have a space for a max contract, and also and you say, know hey, guess the what? Timberwolves we're... and Pelicans don't want to tank. Yeah, the Lakers don't want to tank. No, and you can say, hey, we're in L.A. What's up? You know what I mean? Not only do we just draft this stud, we can bring over because they're you know you hear a lot about them wanting Kawhi and their their scout or some guy from their staff is following the Raptors and shit. Lawrence Frank, it's not some guy. Is it Lawrence it's Gene Frank? Gene Parmesan, Lawrence Frank. Stop. I didn't know it was him. <laughs> it really is, yeah. Oh my god. Um, so yeah. No, they're sending the like high profile guys to be like insanity. Hey, yeah. Yeah. So point is, is if you're the Clippers, why not why not go full stop and just cancel the rest of the season and and try to get what you can't because you're right, Pelicans aren't gonna tank. There's no way in hell the Lakers will will tank with Braun Braun. Although that it's would almost happening. be that actually my so my answer is the Heat. Sure. Um, I just feel answer. like I, I like Richardson. I think mm -hmm. he's nice. I think they have I think they have talent, and I yeah. think Spo is so amazing mm -hmm. that he generally will field a competitive team. You forget he's still there sometimes. He's yeah, good, he's good coach. He just tied uh, Riley for games coached. Wow, for Miami. really? Yeah, so he's ready to, to be the uh, their like longest tenured coach. Good for him. Um, but yeah, I just think they're they're so bereft of of, of meaningful talent. Yes, and I, I, again, I don't really prescribe to this kind of logic that much because I think Miami is a free agent destination. But I just feel like they need some, they need more in the pipeline. Than well, they listen, have. the like thing much is, more. you're you're, like you're right, looking though. at Tyler Johnson, Richardson, Winslow. Uh, you know, um, yeah, this would be a good time to do it because bio, like or, you said, this is a hot this is a hot draft yeah. class, and next year's is, is going to be really hot too. Um, and they're a free agent destination, but if you're if you're like a highly touted rookie, getting drafted to the late to the Miami Heat would be awesome. I'll go to yeah, yeah I'll go to Miami. Sure. We got another 15 years before it's underwater. I might as well have fun. By the end yeah, of my seriously. career, I probably won't be able to play here. That's why Toronto's a good... If you think about climate change, Toronto's a wonderful destination. I mean, we got all the fresh water. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not on a coast. Um, we're okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's start getting like sillier wild, than we've already been. Wildfires are going to get us, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, honestly, no one's safe. But, um, yeah, that's true. But uh, check this out. Uh, what? Okay, this is just a dumb all-star topic. But what hmm. is an event... That you would want. This is a good lead into like when we start getting done with our quickish questions. And Matt, <laughs> and Matt if you got anything, hit me up. Okay. Um, what's an event that you would add to the All Star Game? Okay, it would be. You know, it would be cool. I was thinking about um, like horse would be neat in pairs. Yeah. Like you just have two guys going against one another with trick shots, but they could get a little stagnant. That and I think they've tried that in three on three, but they've never done it in the right way. You know what they should do instead is do just. Not not even like I guess horse, but you have to match me. But like crazy shots, you can't do these stupid layups. It's like I'm talking about getting guys into the stands, shooting from the hundred level. I want to see a bounce pass from. Are we just gonna have so court. much of like watching people not hit sure. things? Remember, yeah. <laughs> remember, remember when they pulled Curry up and he was in like, oh yeah, in his like street clothes and he couldn't hit a shot and it was like, well, this is the thing. This it's is like, weird. You know, there's yeah. not that many things you can do like. I got something though. Okay, you ready for this? I, I am actually. I was trying to trying to think of something. Check this out. 
<laughs> who wouldn't be completely entertained by a game between all of the oldest members in the NBA? Ooh, that would be fun. Old so, game. Yeah. Old game. Rust and match. I mean, yeah, if, if it's too many people are like, okay, you know, I, I don't want to injure myself, then you're like, all right, assistant coaches game. But I know even old players, you could be like... But like Vince, you know what I mean? Like there'd be, there'd be so many fun old guys. It's great. funny how like the only person I can name is Vince. But, you know, you know Vince, Dirk, Dirk. Dirk um, you know, probably Powell. Monroe, even uh, probably how old's Monroe? <laughs> Monroe. Monroe's like 29, I think. Oh, I That's know. hilarious. I'm yeah. sorry, Greg. Sorry, sorry, Moose. That's amazing, though. Monroe. Um, but no, I think... PJ that, Tucker would be in there. He'd like punch someone in the heart. You know? What you'd want is you'd want those guys to really, to really sell out and be like, okay, what we're going to do, not only is this going to be this, but we're going to have... Like little little chairs, you guys can go in and get massages, like gags. You gotta have it's gonna be a bit gaggy yeah. for me, you know. We gotta have some gags, some in JFL there. gags. Yeah, you know, you want you want to have a massage table, probably. You want to have a, a cane should make an appearance, <laughs> or like a big a big beard, you know. Make it funny, yeah. And al- although make it hyper competitive, and we'll see some like uh, severe injuries. <laughs> These old guys going <laughs> down. Oh. That'd be cool too. Um, yeah. No. No. I don't want anyone getting that, injured. That's a funny idea. I like that idea. Old guys, come on. Who wouldn't watch that? Rust. A lot, a lot of people wouldn't watch that, but <laughs> I would. I certainly <laughs> would. I would. And maybe they have to. Yeah, they don't get regular jerseys like they have to <laughs> wear like paper. They have to. They have to wear their like rookie jersey. Sack. Oh, that's even better. I was wow. going to say. You know, potato sell some, sack. sell some jerseys. Yeah. You got some good ideas. Hey. Like, potato sack idea is not as good as. Jeez. Matt, you got any uh, dumb ideas? Yeah, I've, well, I've got something that uh, you know is just uh, kind of messing with uh, the rules of the game a little bit. Okay. Okay. So check this out. You got the two teams playing the All Star game now. The f- per quarter, you can only like one quarter. You can only do threes. The other quarter, you can only dunk. And then whatever team wins, <laughs> the only dunk quarter would <laughs> yeah. be severe injuries. <laughs> yeah. But whatever team wins the quarter gets to choose which one it is for the next one. So if it's just threes, if it's just you know field goals, <laughs> only pass yeah. would be hard. <laughs> only you, know, you can only pass. <laughs> Nobody or shoots. only only free throws. You have to get fouled. <laughs> okay, this is good. Actually, you know only what? steals. Yeah, come on. Yeah, this, Bu- is good. this is good. <laughs> Building on that ridiculous idea might actually be a good idea because uh, they're talking about this four point line. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. it's a good idea to bring the four point line, quote yeah. unquote, into the All Star game. Yeah, put it in there. Oh, yeah. see how it Watch works. Watch Embiid fire away. Is it exciting? Is it good? Is it too weird? To have a big thing like that to change the whole rule book and stuff is really hard to do. Uh, especially just out of nowhere. Yeah. P- fans aren't going to, not only players, I'm but not, like, I'm personally fans not into have, it. I, I don't want it personally yeah. because you're going to, it's going to, it's going to mess up a lot of stuff with last second shots. Mm-hmm. Like if you have the sh- half court shot, what is that? A four point shot? Now? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's no good stuff like that's stupid, but if you're going to try it, maybe during the all-star game. Yeah. Fair enough. And I will always stick to, I would like an all-star <laughs> bump game. With okay, NBA legends, cool. mm-hmm. they all come out like Jordan, yeah, Magic, and it's from the You're three, with me. You from the see three some point old line. Do yeah, some stuff. Yeah, from the three point line. How about this uh, dunk contest with uh, <laughs> metal mesh, and you have to wear rings on each finger. <laughs> Oh my and, god. And and the rings where your championship rings. I'm going to puke just. And, and the rings are intense magnets. Oh, so like you might god. get stuck on the chains. Like you know oh, what I mean? Like, what a nightmare. Okay, no, like know, what, be, yeah. know what you're doing. I've never even thought of that as being a hazard on those chain nets. Oh buddy. That's something to think about. There's eh? some you don't want to go <laughs> There's been situations where people have ripped their fingers clean off. Oh my god. Yeah, Chaindunk.com. Is that real? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. You said can, it with such <laughs> confidence. I was like, wait, what? I can, show you, I can show you a picture on the internet if you want to see it. No, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out on the on the on the uh, yeah, photo. You, you, guys, don't, you don't yeah. want to see that. At Check all. it out. Chaindunk.com. Okay, we got some uh, we got some fun quickish questions to get to. Show you a but on um, the this is uh, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah, this Matt, is a fun one. Tell me something I don't know about one of the most beloved Raptors, the right. Red Rocket, Matt Bonner. Oh, Matt man. Bonner. Okay, so yeah, this is this is before my time as a Raptors fan, but I'll say that he was one of those players that stood out to me in the news. Yeah, as we just ate a, a sub on the sports TTC. fan. Yeah, <laughs> come on, yeah, it's huge. It's true. Yeah, I guess he was really promoted in the city. Um, and if, for those who don't remember, he played for the Raps between 2004 and 2006. Did you know that he's the only Raptors rookie to ever play in all 82 games? Hmm. 
Interesting. That's a cool one. Yeah. Matt, thanks. There's all kinds of fun stuff. This just shows a bit about his integrity. Before he came over to the Raptors, because he was drafted by the Bulls mm-hmm. and then was traded, um, he played one year in Italy, and the team he played for went bankrupt in the middle of the season and said, look, we're not going to play. We can't pay you. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the players left, but Bonner, he finished the season, kept playing on. <laughs> That's <Wow>. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, now let's get to some of the nitty gritties here. Okay, uh, he, I didn't know there's Bonner nitty gritties. Yeah, he's a sandwich enthusiast. Okay, good. Yeah, he has a blog titled "The Sandwich Hunter: The Quest for the Hoagie Grail," in which That's he documents great. his search for the world's best sandwich. Hmm. Like that. Wow, you you must love this guy. <laughs> I do like <Yeah>. him. <laughs> um, I like that he appeared on a show with his wife called Tiny House Nation where uh, him and his wife had a 276-square-foot house custom-built. That's a really tiny house, man, for a big man like that. See, I so am such an apartment guy. I was like, how big is that? Like, I don't even know. Yeah, it's 276 square feet. That's just, this is like yeah. probably... Yeah, about that. This is about that size. What, like this room? Yeah. Oh, this studio? We're in a warehouse, if anyone's <laughs> listening. It's a big warehouse, and it's like outfitted with so many cool things. We're in the yeah. bottom basement of the Pentagon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. We're, we're in the Pentagon, and like it's, we're pretty protected, just so you know. Um, yeah, and, and I guess the last thing I have is just that, I, you know, like he's only here for a couple of years, but he must have really liked Canada because he applied for his citizenship in 2009. And yeah. his uh, wife's Canadian, I think. That's probably why he did it. <laughs> but, you know, he still, he wanted the sick citizenship. Sick going back and forth for Christmas, and you have to keep going through customs. I'm sick of it. Yeah. You're sick of it. Okay. Yeah. Is he in your, like, <laughs> is he in your hierarchy of, like, Chuck Hayes now, or Chuck yeah, Wagon's no, still his own definitely. Man? I would, honestly, I would definitely get a Matt Bonner jersey. If, I thought you were going to say yeah. tattoo. Tattoo. Like, please, <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> Pull back piece. <laughs> please get a tattoo of someone you just kind of like yeah. looked into. Um, okay, yeah, let's uh, there. let's do some quickish questions. We got a bunch and uh, we're going to rifle through them. It's going to be a good Sweet. time. All right. Matt, would you give me that quickish question sting? Quickish question! Get that garbage out of here! <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Get that out of here. <laughs> yeah, the faded voice is wonderful. Um, okay, boys, you know how All this right. works. Um, I'll try and not meander too much. Um, <laughs> don't phone a friend on me. You give me an answer as fast as you can. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. All right. Ian, let's come yep. to Mondra. Yep. Do you buy into the concern that we're giving Kawhi special treatment and it might be it might be creating resentment from the rest of the team? No, I don't think so. I think that the team, they love him. I think that they know that they can win with him and they have a shot at the at winning the chip. So I think they're cool. Yeah. Matt, come from Andre. Okay. Hi, Which Andrew. two NBA relatives in their prime would make the best duo? Oh, Example, man. Morris Brothers, Gasol Brothers, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Senior, Steph, Seth, and Del Curry, the Barry family, Luke plus Bill Walton, Reggie plus Cheryl Miller. <laughs> Any siblings you think would be the best? Oh, it's got to be siblings, eh? Yeah. Um, oh, God. This is a hard one for me, but I, I like I can't see how you could go wrong with the Curry brothers just because you could lean so heavily on Steph. Yeah. Uh, so I would definitely pick that. I, 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 just, I don't usually answer this, but I would say Psycho T and his brother. <laughs> <laughs> because they would be like, it would be like the almost like That's like Psycho T's like I think he's like seven inches taller, so it could Whoa. be like a yeah, um, no, they could do Mad Max damage. like Beyond Thunderdome like Master Blaster <laughs> thing. Um, but uh, okay, Ian, come from Andre. Mm-hmm. Alternate Husky jersey, bring it back, leave it in the past. Bring it back. I like the Husky. Why not? Husky's cool. Yeah, Huskies yeah, are awesome. It. Husky gas stations are wicked. You can get breakfast there. <laughs> <laughs> bring the Husky back. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Husky Gas Station. Good yeah. gas station. Um, yeah. <laughs> Matt, come from James. All right, hi James. What was the excellent question I thought of earlier this week, but can no longer remember? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's, he's being honest. What was James thinking about earlier this week? Um, I think he was thinking about. Who's the next when when Kawhi leaves? Who's the next superstar that we get? Fair enough, James. Let us know if Matt got it. Ian, yep. come from Tom. Do your best impersonation of the sound Pascal makes when he drives to the basket and feels he has been fouled. Okay, ready. 
Oh! Nailed it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> I come from Tom. Can you name a better title for a basketball themed adult film than Load Management? Whoa. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, he's splash, having a splash. <laughs> splash Mountain. Splash, splash Mountain, <laughs> yep. I just liked your, your very immature giggle. How hey, about no. this? How about Hoop Dreams? Yeah, see? Hoop Dreams. Wow. <laughs> hoop Dreams. In yeah. for the win. <laughs> um, I was going to say something with dribble, but. Maybe a butt okay. feature. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ian. Yeah. Coming from Brian. Mm-hmm. Who is the ideal candidate to run our offense when Lowry's tenure draws to a close? Van Vliet. I think Fred's a great professional point guard. I think that he can be even better than he is. He knows when to pass, when to shoot. He's good uh, game manager. I love Freddie. All right. Yeah. Just keep him off Go Daddy and we're good. <laughs> Fair <Yeah>. enough. <laughs> yeah. Matt. Yeah. Come from Tom. Hi, Tom. Can Kyle Lowry dunk? Um, well, um, one of those nets, you know, like you had out in your driveway that you could <laughs> lower it. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Kyle, I was going to kick your ass, man. Bring it on, buddy. Um, he can definitely do it. Yeah, he could probably do it. He did it once in the All-Star game, but it was a while ago. It was like three years ago, maybe. He's strong, though. Well, he used yeah. to just that, run up to Mars back, too, he's sometimes, got that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's one of the only players like that in, jumps uh, off other players. <laughs> Like uh, Jim Carrey and the cable guy. Yeah. No, yeah, that's that's real. <laughs> if you can't uh-huh. dunk with a glute like that, why even have a glute? Fair enough. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Ian, come from Andre. Pascal recently entered the top 25 for games played as a Raptor with 184, passing JYD. Are you as surprised as I am? Yes, actually. I'm, su- I'm very surprised that it's that, that few in a top 25. All I can say is that I hope he makes it to top 10, top 5. He's a great player. Hell yeah. Love to stick him around. Or Matt. Mm. Stick him. I'd love to stick him around. Whoa, Ian. <laughs> well, all right. All right, Matt. Truth comes in. <laughs> Come from Jonathan. Who would win a game of one-on-one between LeVar Ball yeah. and LeVar Burton? <laughs> um, wow, books, and, and then, books sorry, smart against Jonathan also says, brand smart. Jonathan also says, recall that LeVar Burton can fly twice as high. <laughs> Yeah, how could I not? I could never be in LeVar's car. I gotta go with, with, um, fuck, I can't remember his name now. Uh, LeVar Burton? LeVar Burton, yeah. I'm going to LeVar Ball. Sorry. Never lost. No. That's great. Uh, Ian. Yep. Come from Tristan. Mm-hmm. Well, oops, so you, uh, first thing he said, been waiting for this thread, cracks knuckles. <laughs> uh, then Tristan says, if you were in the dunk contest, what props would you bring out for your final dunk? I'd bring out um, probably a bunch of like uh, like what are those called? Not not balloons, not hair, hot air balloons, but like you know you can make like a little dog out of the balloon. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the ones that twist. And... What are they called? Fun balloons? Uh, I don't know. Twisties. Yeah, Twisty bring... balloons. Balloon animal. I'd, uh... Yeah, I'd make a bunch of balloon animals. I'd probably make like a balloon uh, of my competitor and try to dunk uh... on that that <laughs> balloon thing. Or maybe a cake. Maybe I could eat. A... <laughs> you know what I do actually. <laughs> I'm going to bring out uh, like one of those, not a full keg of beer, but like a cylinder. I'm going to try to chug as much of that beer as like I can. Like a bumba? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to chug it, and then I'm going to just try to dunk. That's amazing. I'm going to spin around five times as well, and then try, and then try to dunk. Okay. Watching Ian eat a cake, drink a bubba, spin around, and then fall down in an all-star game? <laughs> yeah. We all deserve it. I mean, that would yeah. be great. Uh, Matt. Yeah. It's coming from Tristan. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. What would your NBA nickname be? Um, my NBA nickname would probably be the, uh, the Irish cock. <laughs> yeah, are you going to say the, the Irish cock? <laughs> the, what are you about the, to I, say? the Irish cobbler. <laughs> okay, still Because I would make my own shoes. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Fair enough, dude. Daniel Day Lewis over here. Yeah, you, yeah, you be you, man. Um, and then he asked us, uh, Ian and me, to, to, to make up our, our nicknames and then our nickname as a unit. So okay. What's your nickname? Mine's got to be. I I had this nickname before because I was the only white guy that would play in, in the league. I used to, they used to call me Big Country. Big so country. I'm okay. I'm big country. Big country's good. It's all right, wow. right? Big country. Um, well, I'm Irish cobbler. And what would I be <laughs> on the court? I'm like a bit of like a Lance Stevenson on a bad day. Mm. Yeah. Um. So I'm a, you know I'm taunting folks. I'm missing tons of shots. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but I'm doing some kind of spectacular things. Uh. Let's say. Um. Uh, electric sunrise. 
Uh, you know what? How about electric mudslide? Yeah. Okay. Uh, perfect. Okay. Um, Ian. Uh, oh wait, 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 wait. What's our yeah. what's our about, uh, what's our unit nickname? Big sorry? country, big country mudslide cobbler. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a nice. It literally rings. A yeah. Big country mudslide cobbler. Way. Here they come. How about the, uh, the Husky <laughs> gas station boys? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Toronto. People are like, why a gas station? You know what I mean? We're a Petro State and all that. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, uh, Ian, come from mm-hmm. Tristan. Uh, the 13th anniversary of Kobe dropping 81 on the Raptors oh. just passed. Yeah. What's your second least favorite memory from the uh, 2006 season? Oh, wow. From that season? From that season. Well, I don't know if you can... You I remember that season because I was still in university. So my second favorite memory was probably me just getting so hammered every day and, and eating pizza and waking up uh, on the floor, not knowing where I was. So that's the personal memory, not so much a Raptors. Yeah. Actually, that year, uh, we're, we made the playoffs 2006, or did we not? We d- we didn't. That's we like, didn't. So that so was a, that was a down year. That was Jalen Rose Pat and, and Jalen uh, Rose, and Bar- Sam Bar- Mitchell. Bargnani. was yep. Bargnani on that team still. My second favorite memory was the whole, was on the whole team. year. How about that? The whole year. That's a good answer. The whole year. Stinker of a year. Okay, yeah. we got uh, two more questions. Or I think no, sorry, the last question. Last question. Um. Okay, that was the last question. That's it. I feel like I just did a Matt Devlin when he was like, um, <laughs> and we're going to overtime. I'm sorry. The Raptors win. <laughs> it, 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 by the way, that happened, and it's one of the best Devlin moments. Oh, was that was Pascal? Uh, was that just recently? No, that's probably like four years ago. Was there a question about... I'm sorry. The Raptors win. Yeah. Uh-huh. Even, and we're going to overtime. And you I'm have, sorry. The Raptors win. You don't have to be sorry about that. That's fine. Yeah. Was, did, was there an Amir Johnson question? I thought I saw one. Um, no, I think there was some Amir Johnson conversation uh, elsewhere. Just if he was more, you know, Amir, was Pascal Siakam more beloved than Amir, which is nuts. Oh, yeah. that's a, that was on there somewhere. I think oh, Amir, fair enough. Amir Johnson. If eh? I missed you, sorry. Um, oh. I would say Amir is more beloved still. Oh yeah. You gotta give Pascal because, some time, but he's yeah, getting there. And Amir like really, yeah, Pascal will get there, I think, but Amir really, really, if you say Amir Johnson, it also sounds like a like a, a um, not up to standard yeah. phallic. Unit. Oh yeah. Oh, well, there's a great Johnson, and then you're yeah, just Amir well, Johnson. Amir Johnson right there. Um, that's the Sorry. pod. That yeah, was great. It is. Uh, you're the best, me. Ian. Thanks for doing Episode it, man. Episode 94. Always, always love being on the pod. It's amazing. Yeah, so um, much fun. You're the John Goodman to our SNL. Amazing. Good. Wow. That means I probably should go to the doctor. Yeah, you're <laughs> no. you're not our John Goodman to Treme, so don't worry, we're good there. But uh, you just host a lot. You know what, what um, what do you got coming up? So this is gonna um, come out on uh, Thursday, the twenty fourth. Well, Fourth. damn! If you're listening, I st- I'm doing that Icebreakers Comedy Festival uh, that day, the twenty fourth of January. I'm excited for that. I got the Alt Dot in February, Woo. doing lots of stand up throughout nice. the city. Uh, lots of Instagram videos. Shirt underscore Gordon. If you care about that uh other than that just living my life you know trying to stay in track pants as much as i can good yeah yeah uh awesome um okay. follow us on all the all the stuff and thank you so much for listening thanks Matt. for listening yeah, yeah. you got yeah. anything else that's it just keep on loving and listening and <laughs> wow <laughs> steve perry over <laughs> Matt just had a seizure keep on loving <laughs> <laughs> listening. Hey, you're about to die um, okay <laughs> sign off uh thank you so much everyone for listening to the podcast no. uh bye See take you. care can anyone around here speak basketball It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. 